Hello, hello. Yo. Yo, dude. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing awesome, man. Oh, fucking. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little recap vibe. Very, All right, very hell short. Yeah. Let's because, do it. Uh, you don't remember. You don't remember everybody you coach. So understandable. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. Dozens and dozens. But um, you helped me with the PVT uh, like a month ago, and oh, um, yeah. I you gave me that like two gate robo opener into Colossus. Okay. Build and yeah, yeah. I just gotta like let you know that my Terran has been versus Terran is so much better. Sure. Nice. <laughs> that. Um, I uh, the, the highlight so far has been I was playing a PVT on Simulacrum or however you say that map. Yeah, and, I, um, I, I pretty much say like Simulacrum, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying it right. And uh, I get down there with my Hallucination Scout and I see he's going for a 201 opening drop. And it, I also noticed that it's very late, right? <clears throat> and uh, I guess at my base at like, you know, 6 o'clock, like 620 or something. And I already have like two Colossus. Yeah. And so I hold it like really hard with the Colossus and he like types this really long, like, he like stops playing. He's like, watch the replay. Like he stops playing to like start typing. Sure. He basically says, "How the fuck do you have a Colossus already? You c word. I hope you die of COVID." And he leaves. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he used the other c word too. And too. I just, I just, I just thought, I just thought to myself, "We have five thank for this. Thank you so much, five. <laughs> yeah, man. I, uh, that's what it's about, dude. Getting getting that ladder salt, ladder rage, you know. Get, pissing your opponents off. Like this build's good. Is this build good? Uh, but yeah, that that Colossus build, I would say, is uh, defensively, it's a really strong opener. It uh, it makes it to where you don't, it. yeah, you don't have to like multi prong attack and do crazy stuff. You can just like literally let your opponent kill themselves on you, basically. And then we'll, if, yeah. unless you go for the timing eventually, where then you attack them. But yeah, I'm glad it's working out for you, man. That's awesome. So today I want to talk about my PVZ. Okay. There we go. Um, <clears throat> I um, I'm 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 Diamond Two, okay. and um, I my current build, my current go-to play style against Zerg is I open Twilight. Okay. Um, and I kind of build like you're doing an Archon drop. Yeah. A DT Archon drop, but the Dark Shrine is slightly delayed because what I do is I actually like warp in some charge lots at one location first, and then I go in with the prism on the other side with the Dark Templar. And I'm expanding behind this and taking my third behind this, and I basically drop some DTs and try to get some damage done. And then I kind of the basic plan is to transition into, you know, upgrades, charge, uh, uh, no, upgrades, constant immortal production, um, Templar archives, you know, for Archons and Storms, and, like, I try to play macro from there. Yeah. And what? generally speaking, um, I, I mean, I still love comments on my macro and all that stuff. But yeah. I'm sure there's lots of stuff wrong. We'll know, definitely talk about some. Too, but, sure, yeah. But um, generally, I most of the time, when I manage to pull off my timing attack, like, nothing really kind of goes wrong. replay like, analysis, don't know. I will be around for when you do the analysis. I, I tend to win the just game. Catch the I mean, there's a lot of times where Have I don't nice like that Zerg counterattacks, and I'm just not prepared yet, or I just didn't macro well behind my attack a game or whatever, and I'll lose. But I, I feel in control of the game when I manage to pull that off. Um, most of the time, when my PBZs go wrong, um, it's due to early stuff that I'm just not responding to correctly, or scouting properly, or dealing with properly. Um, it's even like as bad as I'm sending my first chrono to Dempt out and there's just all the Zerg did was make a bunch of slowlings yeah. and like the game I lose the game to freaking slowlings and the, the, the game snowballs out of control for me and you know I, I tend I tend to go on to lose or if um, you know the Zerg opens with an early pool and you know I'm I'm holding it and I'm really not sure what the Zerg is doing behind it and I'm, I, I, I feel kind of like lost in the woods as to whether I should be, you know, transitioning back to my normal game plan or macro game or if I should be you're know, trying to counter attack the Zerg. If you want to build or, that's or just, I should be I would I would say if you want to build that's like super solid and standard for a diamond Protoss, uh there's a lot of ways you can play PvZ. There's a ton of ways. But I would say the yeah. the I would say focus less on the active micro based units and focus more on the what it's not ultimately a death ball, but it's kind of like, uh, it's like a semi death ball where it's like, it has this like point in the game where it just becomes 
very, very, very strong. And what I think you could do, honestly, and I, I did this kind of stuff in beta gym as well, and I thought it was uh, like super easy against Zerg, the way Zergs play, because most Zergs play hyper aggro, uh, and it's it's good against almost every composition. The only one it kind of struggles sometimes against is Mutas, but we can talk about that as well. But if you just went like Sentry into Sentry Stalker and with uh, Colossus, and then you just get Double Forge, and then you just literally go for a Sentry Stalker Colossus timing, and you can add an Archons at some point. Like, I bet, honestly, okay. a style like that, just just in terms of, like, understanding how to gain control against Zerg, and, and understanding how to place your buildings will uh, make massive results for you. And then from there, once you get really good at that, and you get really good at pacing a game against Zerg, you could start then incorporating pressure builds, like, for instance, adept pressure builds with, like, Phoenix follow-ups, or, uh, like... Um, like charge lot openers, DT openers, Archon openers. You could always go into charge lot Archon Immortal later on, but I think uh, <clears throat> I think charge lot Archon Immortal builds scale better if you if you're doing a build that is pr it, like it it the Archon charge lot Archon Immortal always follows a build better that does pressure because you slow the Zerg down. You know what I mean? It's right. it, or what? Yeah. Ar, what? Ar, what? Charge the Archon Immortal is is it has no fucking control. It literally has no control of the fight. It has brute force, just like muscle that just pushes the Zerg over. And the more you delay the Zerg's economy because you pressure well up to this point, the weaker the Zerg will be when that fight eventually comes. And you'll just you know the better you do uh, up to that point, the more you're just going to run him over. But if you're doing a build that you know, if you're if you're not really doing a lot of pressure and you're just trying to do charge the Arkham Immortal builds against Zerg, the Zerg is gonna have an easier time having his own muscle that's gonna like push you back and just you know cripple you instead. Yeah, I've noticed that because um, I, um, in response to, you know, talking to people on the internet and stuff, you know, complaining about my lack of uh, uh, awareness early game and responding to some certain things like this. Yeah. Um, you know kind of the go-to response is, well, you should just play the standard Stargate, which is safe. Yeah, that requires activity, uh, though. And, and it's hard. Yeah, and, right. And, and um, you know, so that means I need to know how to get the most out of an Oracle. Um, and I really don't. Um, I really like Oracles in PvP, and I, I always use them. But, like, with PvZ, I just, you know, they just make a spore. Like, I can't really get damage done. There's, I guess there's a threat of me doing annoying stuff, but it doesn't slow them down like you just described quite like you know the prism attack opener does yeah um and even then i still die to stupid stuff because i don't really need know how to read what the zerg might be doing sure when i open so so i'm willing to try your build but yeah. um i'd also like if you don't mind i'd still appreciate a little bit of help or tips yeah, yeah, yeah. in the right direction oh, we, we, of, like we, how to yeah. how to feel out what the zerg might be doing yeah we can we can look at your uh, your builds too uh i just think that like for your case if you do sentry stalker colossus and then you can go into archons uh it's really really solid just because of the fact that you have the access to multiple sentries to, to scout with multiple hallucinations so you'll always have somewhat of a read on zerg you'll see his yeah. base count and you don't have to leave your base to do this you'll have a read on his base count you'll have a read on his tech you'll have a read on his current composition uh, stuff like that and then you'll also it, so it, it will encourage you to it's like a mild form of incorporating map awareness it's not like you know oh, i gotta fly around with my 10 phoenix and just constantly like pressure shit or i gotta like phase around with eight adepts and constantly do damage and warp in more over here constantly keep killing drones it's just like yeah, i'm gonna chill i'm chilling and i'm gonna keep scouting you i'm gonna keep being active in my own easy defensive way and then once i hit that point where i hit that like smooth sweet spot timing I then kill you because if you don't have an army that is, you know, formidable here, which a lot of Zergs I feel like won't, because uh, a lot of Zergs will keep attacking you instead, and if you just have decent force fields uh, defensively, you'll just crush repeatedly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but we we can take a look at your replay and then we can talk about it and see what's going on. Okay, I, cool. I can give you ideas. Um, so I have this uh, really fast replay of like the kind of stuff that like. Should it? I feel like shouldn't it be happening to me, but still does. Sure. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just letting you right now. I'm absolutely shameless okay. for showing you this replay. Your, your, your sure. chat is gonna. Love uh, okay. It. All right. Uh, how do I, how do I get to a party with you? So, jo just join either, uh, just when you get on Battlelet, type slash join space vibe, or vibu, or you can go to the group chat vibes raiders. 
And then that'll put us in any group, any any type of channel together so we can just invite easy peasy. Uh, I'm in all three of those channels already. Okay, I see. I'm in the vibe. Nice. Yeah. So I'll just, I'll make you party leader. Oh. Nice, nice, nice. So, um, what, what pissed me off about this replay is I got to his base and I saw what I thought was a normal hatch gash pool. The yeah. pool was just starting when, when, I, when my gateway scout pro okay. got into his, into his main. Yeah. And so I kind of like didn't have the, oh shoot. I should have made you know, Yeah, right? yeah it's, it's all good. We just remake really fast. Alright. Keep, keep um, going, though. You can tell me what's going on. Um, is this... I hope this is the right one. We'll see. I don't feel like this is the right... Bad better. What are you doing, man? It's not the right one? <laughs> I'm just kidding. How, I'm how joking, dude. <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, sure. Uh, if it's not, we can definitely just start over and go to the, go to the other one. It's all good. Do you want me to like speed through it really fast just to make sure it is the right one? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, so it's only three minutes. Super quick. Yeah, I feel like it should have been. Yeah, so they're... Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the right one. I just don't remember. I just don't remember it being on this map. Okay. For some reason. Yeah. So, so as you can see, I get to his base, yeah. and I see what what I think indicates to me that there's not going to be like ten fucking slowings sure. in my base immediately, right? Yeah. And I get out there, and I, I know I I could have done. Th I had a stargate that was practically finished. I had an adept I could have pulled back. I could have tried harder. And to be honest with you, I was trying to farm <laughs> for. I, I was. In this game, I was actually farming for this kind of crap for you for our, our coaching lesson. Mm -hmm. Because, but, yeah. Um, I, I just don't, like, maybe I should have left my probe around there a, a, a space a little bit longer. I yeah. I uh, feel like I had a reason to be there. That's, you know. So, I'll say this, okay? Uh, if you are paranoid about things like that happening, there is definitely a way you can scout the, the Zerg actively. To really, and this is why also some Protosses, if you if you know that like you know if you've seen, I'm sure you've seen this, but some Protosses will just be like, I'm annoying as hell. I'm gonna keep mining your minerals. I'm gonna keep mining your minerals. I'm keep mining your minerals. You don't necessarily have to do that, but what that does as well is it keeps the probe in their base for a long time. And what you look at is the larva. So when a Zerg player builds a spawning pool, okay, the spawning pool itself is like a 40 second, uh, it's 46 second build time. And if you generate one larva every 10 seconds, it means that if the Zerg player just starts letting larva stack up after roughly like two larva have spawned once he starts the pool, it means that the Zerg player can most likely have three larva done just sitting there as the pool is finished as well. And when the pool finishes, that's when his natural is going to finish too because he's going for a build that is hatch uh, gas pool. <coughs> so the pool and the hatchery are going to pace together. So it means he could have actually, if he wanted to, four larva right as the pool's done to send eight links to your base and if your probe sticks around a little bit longer you could you could see this however you don't have to do this what you could do instead is you could just go if you if you want to play defensive you could also instead of going adept first and having a chance of this fucking you over because you're trying to run one adept across the map to harass him right away you could actually open stalker first and then use that to de not only defensively deny an overlord, but you could use that to defensively absorb lings that attack you. Because if you have yeah, a, okay. All right. yeah, if you, if you have a stalker in a doorway, like not only does it allow you to hide your tech, but it's good against lots of things. It's good if like if this guy were to, you know, be like, I'm gonna start really quickly teching to, towards roach timing. Like that stalker is gonna help a lot again in that situation because stalkers are great in that situation. If you figure out that that's what's eventually gonna start happening, if it was a uh, if it was a uh, what's it called uh, bailing bust stalker is amazing there because it absorbs banes like crazy in a wall and if it's if it's just slowlings walking in your base a stalker is great there too because a stalker is faster than an adept and even though an adept hits lings harder an adept can actually it's kind of scary because you're on the verge of getting surrounded repeatedly with an adept uh, you'd have to keep phasing you're like doing a phase away and hoping that you don't get surrounded yeah. in the meantime a stalker will never get surrounded if you just kite Never. And it takes it takes an adept two hits to kill a ling, it takes a stalker three. 
as long as you kind of hit the same one repeatedly. Otherwise, it'll, they'll start regening a little bit. Um, so yeah, Stalker is just a safer choice. But here's the problem. If you go Stalker versus Adept, your Adept is your scout, right? That's what your your that's your follow up scout. So if you go Stalker first and you and you're just gonna go for like again, this is something I talked about earlier, just in the start of this coaching lesson. If you were to do Stalker, it would be a great synergy if you're not gonna do something aggressive to go for a sentry next to then use that as your scout. But if you want to do some type of aggression, you could make adepts after a stalker and that would be totally fine. Uh, that's actually my actual PVZ that I do a lot in high level, but this is this requires a lot of activity on the map is I actually go stalker first into like five adepts with glaives and I just push with that like super fast. And then okay. I, I go into yeah, stalker. Um, so, so the reason, the reason um, that I I'm using the adept is purely for scouting. I, I yeah, never yeah, adept to harass because I just don't know what the f I'm doing with that. And um, so I, I'm I'm literally just trying to see you know his drone count if he's um, massing wings if uh, he has an early lair he's not on gas or something weird. Sure. You know? I, I'm, that's what I'm usually looking for with my adept. So if I go stalker and then like sentry next. Uh, when I have enough energy for the hallucination scout, I guess I just I just send it up the main attack path towards him, uh -huh. and then and then go look at what what his tech might be. To be that honest, should be on time. To be well, like like you if you're gonna if you are going to do the the sentry stalker build or the stalker then sentry build, I think you should pull your pro back. You should just see if he's going pool first or hatchery first. But if that if for whatever reason you wanted to keep playing the way you are, which is fine if that if that's what you prefer. Uh, you, I would recommend just leaving your probe at his base longer. I, I'm guilty of this doing this too with the probe, but the thing is, is I always follow up with pressure. But if you're not gonna, if you don't want to do pressure at the like right away, and you want to just kind of like, you know, go into like more of a defensive macro game, you should leave the probe there, because I mean, if you're the the point is, is if you're gonna make if you're going to make a sentry, don't leave the probe there. If you are not gonna make a sentry, leave the probe there. I hope I said that right. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so and then like um, right now you could leave, the, you could run away with the probe. Once you see, oh shit, yeah, he's sac he's made a lot of larvae all at once. The pool's done. <coughs> I'm gonna run away now, and I'm gonna expect like why the hell would he, if he's gonna make drones? Why would he save larvae? Even if he is gonna make drones, he's just behind now because he's just wasted a bunch of time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Go go ahead. I, I I think I feel like I cut you off. If you were gonna say something else. No, no, it's it's, it's cool. Okay. Um. So um. I think the way I would like to play is I, I still want to do some sort of pressure. You, you just mentioned you have a five and depth thing you do, which sounds interesting. I, what I want to do is I want to open up, be reasonably aware of my surroundings and the Zerg's opener, establish myself, my footing, go threaten the Zerg in some way. It doesn't need to be like a massive try hard, sell it. DT thing, which I do, just because it's the only thing I really know how to do. It doesn't need to do, need to be that necessarily, but I, I I do feel more comfortable like threatening the Zerg in some way, or or putting the the threat of an attack at the very least. Okay. And then and then I, I like I really CIA is my much preferred army competition. I've tried other competitions, I just can't make them work. Sure. Um, I've tried Soul Train type stuff. I I. That is not for me. I am not a soul train guy. Okay. Um, I, 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 when I, when I look through like lists of PVZ builds, I always gravitate towards the ones that have a CIA timing, plus one timing follow up. Okay. Um, if that if that makes any sense. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, I would give you two choices right now, really. If you want to, like, I could give you the build that I do. It's very active. I do think it's above diamond level. If you want to, tr if you want to try to start practicing it, though, that's I'm not going to say that that's the worst idea, but it is a build that is. It's the reason why I say it's above diamond level is because it's going to you're you, you're going to fuck it up repeatedly, like it's not easy to multitask, and even because the thing is, is I have hit GM with Protoss, and I don't even multitask it myself as much as I should be, because there's plenty of games where I'm like, wow, I'm not really. Uh, doing much of the phoenix right now i feel like it's kind of falling apart here but we're still going with it uh but basically what it is is uh just to give you a rough rough draft of it it's 
you go for a stalker first. You chrono boost it out. You still you take your you know you go gate not nexus core, but you take a stalker first, and then you go into adept adept. And while you're making a two adepts, you also make a twilight council. You get a quick resonating glaive upgrade, and you chrono boost the resonating glaive upgrade, and then you also make two more gateways. Around the same time, you start making your first adept. Uh, it's roughly around like 34, 36 supply. Anyways, the point of the build is is you make three units out of your first gateway before warp gate's done, which is a stalker, then two adepts, and then all three warp gates, or all three gateways are now done, and your warp gate finishes at the same time, so now that turns into three warp gates. So now you take your two adepts, add three more adepts to it, and as you're moving towards his base, your resonating glaive upgrade finishes. Also, as you're moving towards his base, you throw down two stargates, and your third base. And then this turns into five adepts pressuring him, killing as many drones as you can, throttling the zerg as much as possible while you go into stalker sentry defensively like we're talking like three sentries max and they start making maybe like a few stalkers here and there and you can also make some zealots whatever basically whatever you can afford just stalk, throw in some stalkers some zealots and some and three sentries behind that you go into charge the arc and immortal off of the back of like now eight phoenix from your double stargate and that's the whole that's literally the whole build the way it works and then from from that charge the arc and immortal point because you, again it, this build's very heavily impacted on how much pressure you put on the zerg because if you don't if you do nothing with your adepts and if you do nothing with your phoenix you're gonna be like wow i'm just getting run over every time because i'm not actually throttling the zerg at all like i'm not doing any pressure uh so like overlords need to die queens need to die drones need to die you need to be able to find where his roaches are and not let him be at your base as you start defending yourself like you need to be able to like find roaches in the middle of the map if you can if you have like eight phoenix and he runs 25 roaches across the map and you don't realize it until he's at your door that's awful for you. That's, that makes it way harder. Uh, so activity is required with that build. But eventually it turns from Charge Lot, Archon Immortal, into just Sky Toss. Which is Carrier Mothership, Archon Templar. And so it's... it's a, sounds, or go ahead. That sounds amazing. You know what I used to do in <laughs> HOTS is... Um, I um, I literally had this dumb like turtle Stargate build. Where uh -huh. I literally just sat there and turtled with cannons. Yeah. After a forge, a forge fast expand, I forge fast expand into, into a cannon and, um, you know, get void rays to secure my my third, and yeah. I'd literally be like one of those Protoss that just you know turtles like, void ray carrier, uh, mothership core, and I I just go run over the Zerg you know when I was ready. Sure. Um, and I think that's also partly lends to the fact why I'm not really used to these ground army styles. Okay. Is because um, you know it's it's kind of a work in progress. Like I I spent like an entire iteration of the game like not kind of skipping over that. Yeah, yeah. And so I I think it kind of like it's highlighted like the early game neglect like you know bad awareness of what the Zerg is potentially doing. Mm. Like that's all been neglected because I didn't care because I didn't look because I didn't, I had four tracks and I had cannon or multiple cannons. So yeah. Um, I think I, well, I, I, that's, that's why. That's, that's why I think this build with uh, with like the first build I recommended you would probably be more up your alley. Again, if you want to do the what I just the first one I just said with the the whole build that transition process I just gave you, if you want to do that instead, you can with the pressure. But if you do a build that's like stalker sentry opener with you go up, up to like six or eight sentries, probably like six, and then you just go Col colossus stalker. You make up to like five colossus, and you make just a bunch of stalkers. From there, once you're at like 160 to 180 supply. You could actually throw down Stargate and start getting weapon upgrades for air. And you could go into Sky Toss off of the back of that. As you start trading army away little by little by little, you can replace it with Carrier Charge Lot. And then go into, ultimately, Carrier Templar Mothership and Archon again. Like that, Sky Toss transition is available to like almost any build Protoss can do as long as you have economy. You can do, literally do it with any build as long as you're up to like 3, 4, or 5 bases. It's just the opener is about how you control the game. And I think the builds that don't revolve around Sentry and AoE, like easy to use AoE, like for instance, like Sentry Colossus, that is the easiest way to control a game defensively against Zerg. Because I, if you think about it, tell me how many times you play against a Zerg and that Zerg player goes mass Lingbane Hydra or just mass Roach Hydra or mass Roach Ravager. Just builds like that. Like, is it, how often do you think that happens? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. 
Because a lot of a lot of Zergs play PVZ, especially in your like your level around the diamond area. They play very mid to low range economy and very hyper aggro. They're like, all right, I'm gonna get to like 43 drones, and I'm just gonna fucking mass for the next eight minutes, as many units as I can. I'm just gonna keep going Hydra, Link Bane, Hydra, Link Bane, Hydra, Link Bane, or I'm gonna go Road Travager, Road Travager, Road Travager, just all day. And if you just get a couple decent force fields defensively, every time you get engaged, uh, every time he attacks you. It's super easy to be like, to just like chop suey his army, like your fucking fruit ninja over here. And he's just to be like, hey, Zerg! Just four force fields, and there goes 20 supply. Four force fields, there okay. goes another 20 supply. Okay. Yeah, you know, um, you know, the double Stargate sounds more fun, to be honest with you, but it, I, I do kind of get the sense that you kind of have to know a little. You have to understand the matchup if, a little bit better. I'm gonna to use I'm gonna, it effectively. I'll just tell you right now. I I know I can see the future, dude. I already know exactly what's gonna happen. If I teach you the double stargate build, you are guaranteed gonna have a lot of growing pains with that build, and you're gonna lose probably more PVZ than you lose already right now. And you're until you start getting comfortable with it, and that could I don't know how many hours a day you play, but that could take you uh, five days. It could take you five weeks. It could take you three months. I have no idea. It, de it depends how often you play, and it depends how well you memorize the build and how active you are with it, and, st and how just it's you synergize with it and stuff. But I think if you attempted to do that build when you're not, instead of attempting to do it when you're Diamond Two, if you attempted to do that build when you're like Masters Two or like Masters One, you would pick it up way faster because you'd have way more just a sense of control and like multitask that is just there for you. Because that build, the Stargate build, it literally. You're going to fuck your own build over because you're going to put. You have to put emphasis on pressure, and the more you do that, the less evolved you are as a player. The more your own macro will suffer, and then on top of that, if you don't do damage to the Zerg and you're just like flying in, oh shit, three queens and a spore, run away, and you're like, okay, well I didn't do anything there. I'll go somewhere else, and then like you just fly over another spore, and you're like, okay, well, I don't. I, I'm going to back up, and the Zerg is just smooth sailing with his mining. Uh, all day and you're not killing any overlords or anything and you're not finding ways to do pressure You're just gonna be like wow. I'm getting run over every game. This build sucks And you'll probably I you, there's a chance that you might get frustrated and not even want to use it anymore anyways Because it's a high skill cap build Yeah, well, okay, so I guess I shouldn't be the guy who comes asking you for coaching that says I don't understand PVZ Show me the hardest to understand PVZ build. Exactly. It's going to make it feel harder. <laughs> literally. And I, I'm, I'm warning you. If we do that, like, I'll do it if you want to. But you're uh, going to be frustrated because it's going to be a hard build to do. Okay. All, all right. Let's, let's, go with a, let's go with the Colossus build. Okay. Because you can, st like, I, it sounds like you eventually want to get to, like, that ultimate control anyways. And you want to be like, I want to have that fucking army that's just, like, it runs Zerg over hardcore. Which you still can do that with the Colossus build. Uh, it will still totally happen. But things like this, so we're going back to the game we're playing right now. Uh, <coughs> things like this where you move your adept across the map. I would say you can, yeah. uh, you should always shade out and like first and then move behind it. But, or like go behind it. But instead of move commanding, you should A move instead of just, instead of just move. Because like right now, if you would have had it on A move, you would, at, at the very least, you should, you could see this on the mini map, but also you would hear a prompt. To be like our army is engaging the enemy or, or whatever the hell it's gonna say uh and you are like there's a, also you know if you start smacking his lings you know it looks like he's on move command as well because his lings aren't turning towards you so you could you could have killed one of his lings even if you messed up and you kind of missed it and you're like oh shit i gotta go back you're gonna have an alert notification on the map where it's gonna start pinging a little bit that your the shit's in battle and uh yeah it's just gonna be better so always when you move adepts like this always a move it the only time you should ever move command it is if you're already in his base and you're trying to make distance because you know your adept is going to get caught on units. But if you're moving around the map like this, you always want it to get caught on units because if you do, it means you know there's shit on the map that you should be killing or be, be right, okay. knowing about. I'll make, I'll make a mental note. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Because um, now the correct response here, 100%, is to obviously uh, cancel the shade and then to reshade back towards your base now, and then build a new gateway below your core, so that you can actually have a doorway that's walled off. And then you could even chrono boost your current gateway that is currently building an adept. And if you did that, you would have been 100% fine here. Like it would have been a safe response to just crush this. But I, obviously, if you don't know what's happening, then he gets under pylon and you just yeah. lose the game. Well, I definitely would have dumped both of my chrono into Nexus. I would have, I would have saved one for the gateway. Yeah. And, um, yeah. 
Like, and I also should have just brought my adept back, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even just uh, pulling probes. Like, like even if you were like, oh shit, I just fucked up that shade, and I can't recall because I don't have enough energy. Even if you just pull like eight probes off the bitter line, uh, that's totally fine as well. Like that's that you're good to go. That's uh, like that's like yeah. that's like not an ideal counter to it, but it's still better than losing your pylon and just being like, well, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. you know, it's uh, it would definitely. There's a lot of things I, that could have happened here that could have definitely helped you. I, I was I was hoping to have more examples for you, Vibe, of uh, um, the different types of things that happened to me. Uh, sure. This this was just kind of obviously really stupid. Um, I I think that this was probably totally manageable. Um, but, um, well, an, an easy way to know, the, uh, 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 other things happen to me too. Like, sure, like sure. They, they hit me with link pressure and then they're preparing a roach ravager follow up. And but gonna, I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea that that's happening yeah. because I'm stuck at my base defending. And yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now, if you do the stalkers, I, I, I do like everything you're saying. I'm just like, it's like, ding, stalker sentry, ding, stalker sentry, ding. <laughs> like you're all your problems are going to get solved by like this build. Cause I did it myself in B to GM. And I was like, wow, Zerg is so fucking aggressive in Diamond League. Like, it's like that you, you're starting to get to that point where Zergs are just like, what's well, a drone? All I know are fucking hatchery tech units and maybe some Hydras. Like, it's always Ling Bane, Ling Bane, Ling Bane, Roach Ravager, Roach Ravager, Hydra. Yeah. Ling Bane, Roach Ravager, Hydra. Always, again, and again, and again. And you're, you'll get the occasional oddball Zerg, one out of ten, who's like, I like to go mutas. But every, well, all of these Zergs have one thing in common, and it's... They all cut drones hardcore. And they either go for like these really, really aggressive, like one and a half saturated base all ins, or they go for like these two and a half saturated low eco range, constant pressure builds. Where it's like, I have 44 drones on three bases with six gas and two, two mineral lines somewhat saturated. Like it's like one base has like 15 drones on it, the other base has 13, and the third mineral line has two drones on it. And, you're, and he's just going mass units, and you're like, holy shit, this guy is nuts. Like, he just wants to kill me. But if you just go Sentry, Stalker, Colossus, you're, that build is pure defensive anyways, and it constantly scouts with, uh, like, literally, we're talking, like, every 30 seconds, you're going to have a Lucidian Phoenix just flying through his base. Like, once one expires, you wait for, like, maybe 10 seconds, and you just send another one out, and you just kind of shift it around. And, and as soon as it gets to his base, you can kind of, like, look at it and be like, how saturated is his third? I'm taking my third. Like, how is his? Like, oh, his, his third has two drones on it. And at this point, my third is done now as well, which is really bad for Zerg, because Zerg should always be one base up above me. Like, by the time my natural's done, Zerg could already have eight drones on his natural. Or, like, you know, like, that's just how Zerg works, right? Uh, so you can always keep tabs on his economy, and every time you see his economy looks like crap, you could just be like, okay, well, let's get ready to defend something. Let's just prepare myself. And the only thing you should look for, tech-wise, that should scare you, is a Spire. And if you see a spire, we could talk about that, about how you would want to defend that. But yeah, I feel like this build will definitely help you a lot. It'll it'll definitely give you lots of control. So, uh, yeah, I'm 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 warming up to it. Um, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I uh, All right, I, got I had you. a point I was gonna make and I forgot. Okay, no worries. If you if you think about it again, tell me. It, it'd be like vibe. Shut up for a second. I got to tell you this. I'll be like, all right, tell me. What <laughs> tell me what you think? All right. So uh, hop out of that replay and then uh. I'll host a game for you, and I'll uh, we can talk about the build. I'm rec I'm recommending that you do, and uh, uh, yeah, we could just like give you the ins and outs uh, of it and stuff like that. I, I remember I remember what I was gonna say. So like another thing, another reason I'm kind of warming up to this idea is because another kind of gripe I have about the playstyle I'm currently doing, where I open up with like a prism pressure attack, right? Is like <coughs> everything is is set to be so crisp and so re so precise. Like, if you want to actually execute this prism attack, you don't really want to be stopping and doing stuff like laying, having to defend your base, lay down a bunch of ca uh, uh, shield batteries, get like a bunch of sentries. Like, I feel like whenever that happens, even though I successfully defend it, I'm kind of left with, oh, well, now what? Can I really do this prism timing anymore? Do I just kind of wing it? Sure. Expanding and, and hoping that the, the Zerg isn't hopelessly ahead of me by now. Yeah. Like, I just. It kind of just throws the whole thing over yeah. you know, when they mess up your build like that. So, Well, one thing that might make you also feel pretty happy about, if I teach you this build instead, even though this might not be the build you initially want to go into, where you're like, I kind of want to learn something else. The thing about this build, though, is I think it's going to take you to the next step 
overall of your gameplay in that matchup at least, which is going to inevitably make your multitasking better because you're going to be playing better opponents and that's just what happens. The, the higher you climb, the more your multitasking has to just kind of like maintain up to that level as well. So if you get comfortable with this kind of a build, you're just going to feel more comfortable with Protoss because again, it's, 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 all, it's all about just like, like everything combined. You're just going to be a, a little bit of a higher level Protoss which can then absorb a build that is more focused on pressure then and you you would uh, you would pick up a build like that twice as fast than as you would to like maybe like right now like if you're like 800 mmr higher or something like that like if you if you're just more comfortable you just pick up builds easier that's just how it always goes so getting getting to understand how to control zerg and understanding how to uh you know control a game better and You'll start understanding timings of Zerg better too, because this build is going to really heavily emphasize scouting for you constantly. So you're going to get comfortable with like what a Zerg should be looking like, and what you can then differentiate. Because you're talking about scouting, right? How scouting is kind of difficult. If you get good at this build, you're going to be able to read a Zerg a lot better and be like, oh yeah, I can just tell already this Zerg is like really an aggro Zerg. He's super aggressive, and I'm expecting aggression now, so I'm going to prepare for that. I'm going to like stay in a defensive posture here. Or you can start recognizing Zergs that are like, okay, this guy is super greedy. Like, I'm, I'm able to read greedy Zergs better now. And I can now, you know, not feel as defensive and maybe focus more on a faster timing. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, you just read games better. Yep. All right. No, I, I, I think you're probably right. So. All right, so. Most likely. Right? Most likely. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and uh, right-click my name and uh, toss me leader, and then I'll, I'll I'll set this build up for you. I'll give you an example, and we can talk about it. And you can ask me questions about however it's going, stuff like that. Okay. But this build still will transition to Death Ball. It, it's not going to just be Colossus Stalker, Colossus Sentry Stalker all game. It will have a transition at some point. But it's all about just making your life easier at dealing with Zergs who just ram their head against a wall and are like, I'm going to break through it eventually. You're going to die. I'm going to kill. And then, you know, you're like, actually, no, I'm not. I mean, you're dead. That's <laughs> that's the idea, right? That's, that's what you want to get. <laughs> I'm all for it, man. Okay. All right. So first unit we're going to make is a stalker. Second unit we're going to make is a sentry. And then we're going to make a... We'll still do a, the probe scout, but because you're going to make a sentry second, you don't have to leave your probe there. Uh, so you can maximize getting your gas and stuff uh, when you come back home. All right, so we'll wait until we build a gate, and then we'll move out. <coughs> okay, so now we go across. Build our gas, credit boost our nexus. And this build is also going to have a relatively fast third too. So it's it's very like you, you're you going to be getting attacked a lot because your build is somewhat greedy. Like the Zerg is going to be like, I need to kill that. But you have a very defensive posture based army as well. So it's going to be easy to hold yourself like uh, afloat when you get attacked. I mean, if I have sentries. Exactly. Why not? Yeah. Might attack my third, sure. All right, so we'll just, you know, like the computer always does this. It always makes it look like we're getting one base all in, but we're just going to assume, okay, he's expanded just like yep. the last guy did. Yeah. The uh, AI likes to contaminate a lot, too, I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are trying to show a build order and fucking Zerg is contaminating something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, all right, well, uh, this shit got thrown off a bit. All right, so now we can go back to making probes, make our second gas, and then make our second pylon. Okay, and now <clears throat> we'll chrono boost out a stalker, and we'll chrono boost, uh, we'll chrono boost out our nexus again as soon as the pylon's done. Okay, so Chrono Boost the Nexus, Chrono Boost the Stalker, uh, get Warp Gate, <clears throat> keep making probes, and we're good for now. We can make like another pylon next to our Nexus for now. 
And then this build is also going to take gas a little bit faster because it's sentry based. So as soon as our nexus is done in our natural, we'll, and this is about the time we're, that we're going to have like four probes or five probes, we'll go ahead and uh, throw down our gas, like one gas so far. So a couple more probes are about to pop out and then there you go, there's our gas. And now right about this time too is when we could take our next gate to wall this off, right? Right just like just before three minutes, like 255 to three minutes, throw that second gate down. Make another sentry, and then we can make a robo. Because we're able to maintain all production here. So take a robo. Saturate that gas we just took. Keep making probes. Keep chrono boosting the Nexus whenever we can for now. And we're gonna uh, the, again the goal is to go up to about six sentries. We can take our next gas right around like five or six probes again on the mineral line. They take another pilot. I suppose this has an added uh this has an added benefit of making the Zerg think you're going to all in. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we can take this next gas. And now we're making two sentries at a time. Go ahead and throw down our Robo Bay. Take an observer. And now we got that scout off in his base, so this is your first scout already. You're like, okay, well, cool. Is Zerg teching? Is Zerg going for three base? Is Zerg going for an all-in? And if he was going all-in here, and you were like, holy shit, that's like no drones, it's mass roaches. Battery, 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 stalker, stalker, and you're good to go. What should be the first destination for that scout? Should I look at the third first to you see if he's actually droning it? The very first time you scout him with a sentry, you should scout natural, then main. And then if it's still alive after that, you can scout towards the... Uh, the third base. The, the, every scout after that should always go to like the third first and then so on and so on. And now check this out, okay? So our, our third base, we put a pilot next to the Nexus and we put a pilot next to the gateway wall off spots. And we can also uh, start getting a little bit more aggressive with our army. Leave like one stalker in the doorway here. If we don't think we're getting all in right away, okay? This is, this is like that first scout's gonna tell you, can I take a third or am I getting all in? So now we know we're not yeah. getting all in. So we'll just, just, you know, be like, okay, yeah, we're good. So we move out with our sentries. We leave a stalker in the doorway so we don't get hit by Ling Run buys. And now that our, and we're also making Colossus. And now that our third is started, we can start gateways here to just wall this off. Like gateway, gateway. And we can make a few more gateways like right here. Just to keep a good defensive posture here that makes it hard for the Zerg to do anything. And we created one little doorway right here now. So now I have a little tiny doorway right there. And we could even throw down like a gateway like right here to create a choke point, a pseudo choke point for Zerg if he comes around the other side. The other side. And we're still making stalkers and sentries and colossus. We can just be like, hey, what's up, Zerg? And force field. And now that our third is done, we, we're still chrono boosting probes. But now that our third is done, we could go into uh, um, Robo or uh, not Robo uh, Forges here. Because this is around the time we should be able to afford it. So now we're going to go ahead. Like even though also the fact that we threw these gateways. Even though we're not going to use all of them on, on cooldown yet. We walled ourselves in versus potential aggressive zergs. And we will still use them eventually. But the priority right now is getting a couple forges. And we'll go back into stalkers in a moment. And when you, when you take the forges too. Take your twilight council. And now we can go back into you know taking our third. And getting our, you know, our gas saturated. Go back into making Stalker. And we're just cruising right now. Getting supply blocked, actually. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry. Okay, and then now, once you get to this point, now your Chrono go into your, uh, your Forges and your uh, Council. Do not Chrono boost your... Uh, Nexus anymore. You're at you're at already at that point where you're like pretty fucking solid on uh, your. Um, and are we um we're, we're chrono chronoming uh, Nexus macro uh, only up at this point. We're not chronoing. Uh, you were cr you you were chronoing. Yeah, you, you you don't chrono Colossus. You would only chrono Colossus if you're getting all in. Only if you're okay. getting all in. And that's also because you wouldn't take a third base then. So you don't need to make probes at all at that point because you're getting all in. And again, your your hallucinated scout should always be scouting. Like, I'm not doing it enough this game, so I'm not giving I'm not giving as good of an example as I should be. I should do it more. I'm gonna start doing it more. Uh, if you see a spire like that, 
you're always going to take double forge like this, like we just did, to, you know, prepare for the possibility of this, but it's going to be perfectly rounded out for you to be like, oh, well, if he's going to go Spire, you could take a faster Stargate than you normally would otherwise. If you see Spire, you can go into Stargates now. If you don't see a Spire, you can go into a uh, Templar Archives. So you could basically skip Archons for now, if that makes sense. Like, if it's ground, you could go Archons. If it's air, you can start making Phoenix too. And that's the only deviation of the build, of this point, if you actually saw a Spire. That how way, do I know that he? How do I know that he's not like like going down a spire for like? Do you think he's going for feudalists or um, like how do I know that he's not just getting the spire for corruptors for my colossal dudes? So if he was if he's going for like mass roaches, or like if he's going for like a lot of you know roach style units, roach roach hydra things that cost gas, corruptors are a likely scenario. If he's going for a lot of lings. Mutas are a likely scenario if he's not making any gas units at all. Now, if he is going Corruptor, it doesn't matter because you have a fucking shitload of stalkers that can blink around under them and kill them, and you can also... F so, like, if he engages with, with Corruptor, Hydra, Roach, against your Colossus, you can always just force field his ground army out and let his air army go in, and you could just kill his Corruptor with your Stalker. You don't, you don't let your Stalker shoot over the force field wall against Roach Hydra because they're blocked out anyways. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. okay. Yes. So your, your Stalker are designed to deal with Corruptor, mostly. They can still help deal with Muta, but they're not the best against Muta, which is why a Stargate choice here is not actually a bad one. Um, and then now from here, at your third, you could, you, again, you could add in a few more gateways just to make it harder for the Zerg to attack you. Just create little tiny doorways that the Zerg has to, like, walk around. The gateways just bite, and also makes it easier for you not to get fucked over by, like, Baneling runbys and shit like that. Uh... But now that, again, you're at like 180 supply, you're about to max out. Uh, what you can do now is you can go into um, your Stargate, your upgrades for Stargate. Like, let's say, let's just say if you have or have not made uh, Phoenix at this point, it does not matter. Once you get to that point where you're maxing out, you can throw down like a couple more Stargates. Go up to like four in total and get a Fleet Beacon. And you can start Chrono Boosting also your Cyber Core. And you can get into uh, just Skythos. And you can also then at this point, you should also have charge because you can charge after blink. You could now stop making stalkers. You're not, you've already stopped making sentries and you are not making any more Colossus at five. Okay, five is your sweet spot of Colossus for this build. And you now just go into Zealot and Carrier for now. Just charge lock carrier, charge lock carrier, charge lock carrier. So every time you lose units, you make carriers first and then you fill it in the rest with charge lots. If you lose an army, so let's just pretend like I'm like getting fucked here, you know, like, oh god, I'm losing so many units here. You'd be like, alright, replace that supply with carrier. Because you're still gonna stay postured on his side of the map aggressively, but now you're gonna be doing, you know, aggression through units that are, they're gonna, like, your Colossus Sentry Stalker is going to expire, it's not permanent. You are eventually switching into a death ball, a super death ball of Protoss. And it's at this stage too, when if you have control of the game, you can start doing things like if you look at my fourth base right now, things like this. Where you just can throw down like maybe like six to eight cannons per base with like a few batteries. And then you can take another base in top middle and be like, okay, I'm gonna make three pylons around a nexus and make like eight cannons and like five batteries or what or again, whatever. Because if you look at your forges, right? Your forges have level, at this point now, they also have level 3 shields being started, so your bases are so easily defensible against Ling Run buys. They have max shields, or they will have max shields, and it also means your Sky Toss is going to be very, very, very powerful too, because your carriers are going to be 3-3 three, three shield weapon by the time you really get into that fleet that you're going for, because you're also chrono boosting your cyber core. <laughs> so, this early mass Colossus uh, Stalker Sentry build it will kill Zergs that are hyper aggro and just don't make economy. Like, you'll just run them over. You will be like, well, he's going to die now. But Zergs who actually manage to make an economy and they just don't die, you will find yourself getting to that point to where now you will be switching into Sky Toss. And you will actually utilize your, you know, like, you'll you'll eventually lose every Stalker and every Sentry and every Colossus, and now it's going to be, like, 12 Carriers, like, 6 Archons or 5 Archons and, like, 6 Templar with a Mothership. And that will just be like, you, you honestly aim move that and you just win the game. Now, does it make any sense for me to be doing like 
any kind of harassment whatsoever with this. Should I have like maybe like a pylon on one side, a pylon on the other side? No, no, no yeah. harass. The reason why is because you don't want to be. Here, here's the thing: if you play this well, you will max out really, really, really fast because you're you're playing a greedy style, and every time the Zerg attacks you and you defend it. It's much easier to defend with SimCity than it is to deal with shit in the middle of the map. And every if you do something like, I'm just going to make some Adepts on the right side of the map, because I'm just going to do it. I'm going to make some Zealots on the right side of the map. You're not going to have any type of upgrade to make those units worth it. So all you're doing then is you're effectively making your Stalker count smaller. And the smaller your Stalker count is, the more vulnerable you are to Roach timings, to Hydra timings, to Muta timing, well, like any, anything. You're, you're vulnerable to everything and anything that Zerg can do. Because you're not going to have as big of an army. Because you keep using gateway cooldowns to trade supply away rather than build up. Because the point of this build is you're not going to max out and then sit there on a maxed army for like two minutes and then go attack him. You're going to attack him like right as you're about to max the first time. Which is a very scary timing for Zerg. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I've, uh, I've off raced a little bit every time that... Somebody showed up with a huge stalker colossi ball. That was really that really sucked a lot. Yeah. I I, I of course died. I've died tried trying that sometimes, but so like whenever the, I faced whenever I faced a desert, it was like really like what the hell is this? Yeah. The the one thing that's <laughs> the, the one thing that'll be scary for you though, if is, is if a Zerg goes for Colossus or if a Zerg goes for Lurkers, because Lurker is actually kinda scary for Colossus Stalker. So if that does happen, if your Zerg opponent is the kind of guy who's like, I'm going Lurkers you don't gotta be worried that long because you are inevitably going to Sky Toss with this build. Like you, the the goal is to still to transition eventually, right? You're not gonna just repeatedly make Stalker Colossus. All you gotta do then is maybe just take a moment to be like, okay, let's make a few more observers just to be extra safe, and let's walk away from where the lurkers are and go somewhere else and just repeatedly bounce back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because it's not really possible for the Zerg at that point to have like 30 lurkers and be like, I have. 15 lurkers at every angle you try to engage on every single time like a lot of times what could happen is is if the lurkers are like at let's say he's got four bases and he, he's got lurkers at the fourth don't just run into it and be like okay that was a bad fight i just lost everything just be like oh shit okay there's lurkers here and if it's if it's like one or two you don't got to worry about one or two lurkers you could kill that but if it's like 10 12 lurkers just run to the other base and if you get there before he does force field the ramp or some shit and then he can't bring the lurkers to the base anymore he's just like well I was out of position because I was defending the other base, oh, and the yeah. Protoss has been killing my creep because he has an observer with his army there, so I can't always see where he's going all the time. So there will be blind spots for the Zerg, and it's it's you have to actively be aware of what's happening as Zerg in that situation, which is not super easy. But there's moments where if you just shift your army back and forth, you can maybe create openings where you can then get him out of position for a second and abuse it because you can then force field him permanently out of position while you kill a crucial part of the map, like his expansion, essentially. Yeah. So that's a great way to use that against Lurker. Just literally avoid it, force field it, you know, and go somewhere else. If you're defending against Lurkers, it's not going to be as hard because the thing about Zerg and Lurkers, if they attack you, is his Lurkers guaranteed will not be Hive Tech before 10 minutes with upgrades. And your build is maxing out roughly just around 10 minutes. So you, if he attacks you in the middle of the map with Lurkers uh, and you're defending it, you can just allow your Colossus with an Observer to uh, poke defensively because if he doesn't have range, Colossus actually outrange Lurkers if he doesn't have the Hive Tech upgrade. So if he goes for a really fast like Layer Tech Lurker timing on you, you'll be fine defensively. You can just literally poke it with Colossus and you're all you're good to go. Just poke forward if he pushes forward with his army, kite backwards with Colossus if he pulls his army back, push forward and let your Colossus max range Lurkers because Colossus have 9 range, Lurkers only have 8 range sub Hive Tech. Now, um, if it, it sounds like he, the Zerg probably won't have the proper economy to do something like uh, Broodlords before, if, if I'm doing my timing, if I'm building fast enough, I should. The only way Zerg will have broods. Really have a, the only way Zerg has broods is if he goes for two base broods, which is like a very small number of Broodlords. Uh, we're talking like yeah. like he can make one army of like eight of them, and that's gonna be it. Uh, if a Zerg goes for like a good economy with Broodlords, fast Broodlords kind of hit around like 10.30 to 11 minutes. 
So if you're setting your timing out at like 9.30, like 9.45, because again, we're talking about you're going to do your timing before 10 minutes. So like you're, you're probably moving out of your base by like 9.30. And if a Zerg is going to get broods by 10.30 as a fast pace, you have a full window of time there to just run him over. And if he's rushing broods like that, his ground army is going to be very tiny. So there's a very good chance that if you send Hallucinated Phoenixes out and you spot that he's going Broodlords, you could actually aggressively shove him and then blink your Stalkers into his Broods as they're not really defended because he's not going to have a 200 supply army with Broodlords then. He's going to have a very, very tiny army because he's rushing Broods. You could blink in and just be like, all right, Broods, focus fire, focus fire, focus fire. Or you could just avoid them all together and just kill his economy and then go, oh shit, Broodlords, let's just back up because I'm already going Sky Toss. Yeah. So, so if he's doing it late game at the right time, the re right econ, and I'm transitioning into sky toss as well. Do you? What would you prefer to counter the broods? Would you prefer? Um... You'd be fine just with what you already have. Just d d like all you gotta do, seriously, is just keep like again. You're doing four stargate, and you're you're you, once you get three bases, your all chrono boost is going into weapon shield for forges, and weapons for uh, cyber core. Which you can easily afford because at that point you're going to then, by the time you have four Stargates and you're currently boosting all these things repeatedly, you're going to have so many Nexuses popping energy onto your upgrade buildings. And then you're you're going to be starting 3-3 three, three pretty fast at that point too. So once your forges are done... Why are you such a good person? Hold on one second. BZW love is erg to GM smile. Yo, thank you, dude. Much love. Much appreciated for the bits. Uh, if you... Uh, if you... What was I saying? If you're chrono boosting your upgrades, you're going to be getting high upgrades really fast. So it's going to be really easy for your army to be very durable. Like it's, your, your army is just going to be around for a while. It, there's nothing that Zerg can do really. If you macro well like this and you just posture well and you have f the ability to blink and also use force fields, there's no reason why your army should just get deleted in like one second. So what should happen is your army should get traded out little by little by little, even if it's against Broodlords, where it's like, if you're not really feeling confident to take a fight against Broods, to you know, blink in and be like, all right, well, I'm gonna kill those things. His army looks scarier. You could just lure him around. Be like, okay, I'm gonna go to your left part of your base. Okay, broodlords go to the left. Okay, now I'm gonna go to your right part of your base. Okay, broodlords go right. Okay, now I'm gonna go to your left part of your base because broodlords are slow as fuck. So they will chase you. They're not just gonna let you be like, I'm gonna send broodlords isolated across the map and go attack your base now. So what you can do is you can you can just posture around his base and you can gradually lose your army. And don't just keep being like, okay, I, I'm at like 180 supply, and now I'm starting to make carriers, so I'm about to max out, and I just lost eight stalkers. Let's remake eight stalkers. No, stop doing that. Don't make, literally, stop making stalkers. Fill your stargates up first, and then once your stargates are fully production pumping, then make zealots. Just start making zealots. Again, you don't have to make your zealots either. Go with your army. You know what you could do then? You could be like, hey, broodlords, come to your right side of your base. Zealots, I just made eight of you. Go to the left side of his base. Like, just go over there. And go attack the opposite side of where his broodlords are no longer at. And maybe you kill a bunch of drones. I guarantee that would happen a lot. And you just keep him defensive while, you, again, you're going to lose the zealots. You're going to lose some of your stalkers again. But you're doing it in a way where you're keeping him, like, contained and defensive. And if the, if the Zerg then goes, Alright, I'm at a point now where I've... I got a good broodlord count. I got a good corruptor count. I got, like... 20 Corruptors and like 12 Broodlords. I feel good. And you're like three shields, three weapons, 12 carriers, and you had now have like four Archons and six Templar with that and a Mothership because the Zerg got to this point while you kept pressuring him with Zealots and slowly bleeding apart your Stalker army. The Zerg pushes across the map and runs into that death ball of Skythos now and just dies. Yep. <coughs> You just have to be... The the thing about it is, the, the biggest thing to get comfortable with, is you don't have to commit to a fight with Stalker Sentry. You have every choice to be like, let's let's pace this longer. I'm going to just keep force shielding you and being fucking annoying. <laughs> because the Zerg has to respect that. Because if they don't, and they just charge you, you could, then they're going to throw the game away. Because if you force field then, instead of just like poking him and being annoying, you're going to you're gonna actually cut his army in bits. And you're going to kill so much of his army in the process. And then if you if you take a really, really good fight where the Zerg throws everything away, then you could be like, okay, well, now he just threw the game away, so now I'll push and kill him. Yeah, but if I'm not, if, if I'm headbutting, like, I shouldn't be just 
continuing to reinforce with the same units, I should actually be using my transition. Exactly. Production structure. Yep. Transition. You should feel you should feel like if you're killing creep and you're pushing the Zerg slowly backwards, you're winning the game. You should not feel like you have to get in there and kill three bases the second the Colossus Timing hits his base. Unless he throws his army away. So, even, so um, uh, go ahead. You, you go. No, let me. Uh, why don't you finish your point first? Okay. I was just gonna ask. I was just, them, uh, I was just gonna no. say. Uh, so even if the if the situation happens where let's say you're you're poking the Zerg and he's on four bases and you just started your fourth base and he's got Corruptor Roach Hydra, you don't have to kill his whole army in one second. What you could do is you could just because you have a bunch of sentries that are full energy at this point too. Uh, aside from maybe a couple of Hussein Phoenix that have been going out, so you might be missing a little bit. But what you could do is you could be like, okay, I'm at the Zerg's fourth base, and he's trying to engage me with everything. How about I just throw five force fields in front and close off like a doorway or a hallway, and now I just back up a little bit, and I blink my stalkers in front of my Colossus just to make sure that the stalkers are there. And then my, my stalkers, what I could do as well, just, you know, let's say one of your stalkers is getting tagged by a Hydra or something. You could even hold position your stalkers. So that I think the problem with this pro I I uh, I appreciate the bits, but I will guys, much love. I will talk to you guys in just a minute. Appreciate you though. <laughs> uh what you could do uh about the you know, like the corruptors is you could just allow, allow your stalkers to be like on hold position just so they could kill the corruptor. Or if you blink out of range of where his hydras are on the other side of the force field wall, you could just have your stalkers A move the corruptor. Just as long as you're prioritizing, like, okay. I have the ability to lock out his ground army, and his air army now flies over. How about I just kill the air army and run away from the ground army? Like, that's, that's great. You don't have to take a fight against everything at once. But if he doesn't have a, an air army, so that's no longer a factor, you could actually just slow play it and just poke his hatchery with your Colossus and, like, the edge of your stalkers. You don't just dive forward into his base. You always stay near a choke point. Always. So if the Zerg comes at you in a flank formation, you could... Force field entirely the choke point, and then you can use other force fields to dice up his army on the flank, wherever that is. Or if the Zerg does not flank you and he keeps trying to defend straight up in his choke point, you could just keep dicing him up little by little in the choke point. Just don't overcommit. And then you eventually, like, let's say it takes you three rounds of force fields and you eventually kill that base. But it only, when I say three rounds of force fields though, it was like 12 force fields in total because it was three rounds of four force fields that lasted for a, a period of like 50 seconds and you killed like 40 supply over time and that's great you just killed his some of his economy and you killed a bits of his army every time that is much better than just walking into the middle of his base being like all right six force fields on that side eight force fields on that side i'm going for this one big fat fucking engagement where it's all or nothing with like 15 <laughs> force fields at once that that sounds like me when i'm trying to soul train yeah like literally, you, you <laughs> abuse choke points. That's all it is. Just stay near choke points. Oh god, yeah. And then it's okay. I'm gonna. To I'm, gonna I, I, I'm very excited about this vibe. That's good. Fruit ninja. I'm gonna do some fruit ninja against Zergs. Because be very good. Think about it like this too. It's much harder for a Zerg to deal with Protoss properly if you're walking into an area that does not have choke points. If he doesn't know you're there, and he won't know you're there if you stay near a place where you're abusing choke points until you literally kill everything there. And now he's blind to where you're going because you've also killed creep up to that point. And then if you start moving forward and you kill a creep timber and he charges forward, you could just back up back to the choke point after you've just killed that creep and then dice him up again. And then if he backs up, that's again blind spots now. It's all blind. Uh, so every time you... And then also he loses mobility too because you're killing creep. So again, like I said, you're winning the game if you're constantly pushing his creep back and you're slowly trading bits of your army out into Sky Toss. Because it is a, it's a, it's like a, a pendulum of like a slow transition. It's not just like, woo, your whole fucking ground army died, and now just remax on air. That's never gonna happen. It takes a while to build an air army, so you slowly bleed your ground army out by making use of it. Because it's, it, you have to, you know, expect that if you're attacking, you're gonna lose units at the same time. So if you slowly bleed a ground army out and you slowly build into an air army, you're great. You're, that's how you get it done in a way where it's not gonna just screw you. But yeah, any? Well, I like this. Yeah, you have any sure. questions about stuff we just ex talked about? Yeah, just real quick. Um, so, how many uh, probes is the? Would you say is the ideal uh, max for this? Eighty. What's ideal probe count. Eight, uh, eighty, because you want to have uh, 
your fourth base, when it saturates, you're going to be transferring a little bit of probes from your main. I guarantee it. And then, because it's going to, your fourth base, your fourth base is going to be going down probably around nine minutes. Uh, somewhere between nine and ten minutes. So your main base is going to start mining out around that time as well. And once you start your fourth base, you're going to be building up to 80 and you're going to be transferring other probes that are mining out to that base and it's going to fully saturate it. But then every time you make a base after that, so fifth base, sixth base, whatever, it is never really new probes being made unless you're remaking them because they died. But at that right, point, okay. fifth, every base after that is just transferred probes. Okay, cool. And then how many centuries did you say that I'm going six. up to? So six century, five colossus, a shitload of stalkers. And then once you're there, you you just do stalker. Once you, once you get to that phase where you make stalker, it's just stalker colossus, stalker colossus, stalker colossus. Until you have, again, five colossus. And then once you're there, uh, you just go into Stargates. And a good number to start on Stargates when you start transitioning is four Stargates. Once you get really rich and you start going into full-fledged Skythos, I would say a good number to have of everything would be like have eight Stargates. Like six to eight Stargates. Probably, I would say eight is good if you're rich. And then have like 12 gateways. So you can go into either Zealot run buys at any point in time that you want to. If it just sounds like a good idea at some point. You can go into... Uh, a good, a good number of Archons and Templar, and whatever you want to, and then just eight eight Stargates is good so that if you take a big fight against like a bunch of Corruptors, and let's say he loses, like he bleeds out a lot of your air, you could remake pretty fucking fast, because you're not really making expensive things out of your Robo anymore. You're not making expensive things out of your Gateway anymore. Uh, because, again, you're, you're also going for like maybe like four or five Archon. We'll say five Archon, and you're going to stop. You're not going to make 12 Archon. You're making five and you're done. And you're, you're going to make anywhere between like six and eight Templar, and you're done. You're not going to make like 20 Templar either. Yeah, it totally makes sense to me. I, I can picture it. I can picture it for sure. Yeah, and then the rest is just like, you just want your, your... If you ever take a big fight, you don't want to be like, well, I only got like four Stargates, and I just lost 80 supply, and it's going to take me three minutes to get back to that point. Like, yeah. you, know, you have like 4,000 gas and 7,000 minerals. You want to have enough Stargates where it's like, I can quickly get back there. Uh, and then the gateway... And then, and then, or, go ahead. And, and then my, my, my last question, just to, to recap the build, is... Sure. At what, at what supply of Stalker and Colossi do I start sharking around? When you get to about, like, 180. What, what, roughly around, okay. like, 180. Okay. And you can, ma you can, for the first time you max out, you can totally max out on Stalker uh, as well. That's fine. But once you max, if you if you get really close or you already maxed out, once you you should then have your fleet beacon and your stargates prepared as a transition. So you should start like your first stargate, for instance, when you're like at 170 supply, or so. Like when, around the time when you start, like 160 even. When you start your fourth base, start one stargate, and then when you start saturating your fourth base, and you're getting ready to max out, start upgrades on your cyber core, and also start. Like three more Stargates and a Fleet Beacon at the same time. So you have four Stargate Fleet Beacon finishing at the same time. And uh and then start making start making carriers as soon as you can. And once you start making carriers, stop making Colossus and stop making Stalker. And just know that there's never a reason why you should be be rebuilding Colossus Stalker. If you did get in a situation where you're like, shit, I really need to make Colossus Stalker again, it means you overcommitted. I think this is clear as mud vibe. I am uh, very excited yeah. to try out my new build. So. And then once, seriously, once you get to that, uh, that like we're talking like double digit carrier count with a mothership, a few observers with it, and uh, you know your Archon Templar, that army is like you're. If you're a 4k MMR Protoss, suddenly now you're a 5.5k MMR Protoss. It's like 1500 more MMR because you went for a death ball of Sky of Skytoss with just good assortment of AOE. It's so easy to micro that army, and it's so hard for Zerg to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does seem uh, very uh, in the uh, Protoss's favor, at least around the level that I play. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, like Zerg, guy. Zerg can deal with it, but it is not easy. Like, you have to really understand timings to deal with it as Zerg. But Protoss is kind of just like a move and storm, storm. You're fucking dead. <laughs> like, yeah, all you do is a move and just collect, micro your Templar. Collect BM and move on to the next game. Exactly. So that, that should be, like, your overall goal. You, sh you shouldn't feel like, okay, Colossus has to win the game. 
Colossus is just a means to an end, like the Colossus phase of the game. It's just a means to an end to get to that point to where you can now make Skytoss safely. Because a lot of Zergs will not actually let the game get to that point, because they will kill themselves before you get there. Because they'll be so aggressive in the mid game that, you, like, you know, they're just going to die to the Colossus phase. I think I understand. Um, I'm going to try this out. Nice, nice. And I'll, the last thing we didn't really cover, but if you see a Spire early, we did talk about you can make a Stargate. Instead of going straight into, like, the Temple Archives, uh, which you could do first if you wanted to as well. Like, you're still going to make the Stargates, always. But you can make it early t uh, Temple Archives, too, if you wanted to just start adding in some Archons right away, right as you start making carriers. But if he's that's if he's going for, like, just, you know, like a bunch of Lings, Banes, stuff like that, it would be a good idea to do it then. But if he's the kind of guy who goes for a Spire... When you make the Stargates, you could make them early for, like... We're not even talking about Mass Phoenix either. You could make, like, six to eight Phoenix just to help deal with the Buda, and that, that would be fine if that's what you think he's going to do. But if you're okay. if you're, but here's the thing. If you're worried about Mutas and you don't want to do the Stargate, another way to deal with it, because you have Blink Stalkers, would be just add, like, two cannons and, like, one battery to every one of your mineral lines. Every single one of them. Every base you own, just immediately cannon, cannon, battery, cannon, cannon, battery, cannon, cannon, battery, because you're also getting shield upgrades with this build. So cannon battery is going to tank like a fucking beast against Mutas. It's going to just never die. It's going to last for a yeah, while. Yeah, the building, yeah. buildings will be so hard to kill, right? Yeah. So, so if you, if, like, it'll make it way easier to absorb Mutas with Blink Stalkers because he'll be caught up on your cannons for so long. <laughs> and then again, once you go to that Stargate, you're just, you're fine. So that's something you can do too. But yeah, I think that's pretty much the build. I think it'll, if you do that, you kind of get it down. It'll definitely be solid, super solid. Just don't feel like you have to win the game with Colossus. A lot of people will fuck that up there. Only, only just you play reactionary with a Colossus. If he overcommits, you can then react to that, kill it, and kill him then. But if he does not overcommit, do not ever feel the need to just drive it straight into his main base and be like, we need to kill him now. Because you are still going to a stronger army. Yeah, that makes total sense. Be patient. Yep, that is it. Yep. And uh, as well, once you start moving out with that and you start switching into Sky Toss, you have to make cannons at every base then. That is required, even if it is or is not Spire. Because the one thing you'll be vulnerable to is if you l allow him to do like Ling Road Buys and kill your economy. That's why I started making cannons in that replay that I gave you at that time. You have to do it then. Yeah. Okay. And then, All right. and then, yeah, it's just so good against like, like the last point is, is just like Mutas will get shut down really hard by the shield upgrades. So will Ling run by He'll have like level one melee or level zero melee, especially if he's going Roach Hydra. He'll have like zero weapon upgraded Lings running into like level two, level three shield cannons. And they just like three cannons kill like 40 Lings with shield battery. It's ridiculous. All right, man. Yeah. Thank you I, so much, Vibe. I, I really appreciate Yeah. I wish you the best of luck with it. I I hope it crushes. Let me know how it goes. And, uh, dude, much love, man. Let you know. I'm going to send you screenshots of the VM I'm collecting, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. <laughs> All, right, All right. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you this vote tomorrow, too. But uh, thank you, man. I'll see you next time. See you around. All right. Later, dude. All right. Chat. That was another coaching lesson. YouTube. Coaching lesson done. Um, sorry, guys. I was just trying to get my uh, points across as well. I know I skipped a bit alert earlier. I do appreciate the support, guys. But if the bot starts talking over me and shit while, I'm, while we're talking about it, it's hard to hear him. And it's hard for me to focus on talking to him as well about points. But thank you very much nonetheless. I appreciate you. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed it, there's many more uh, lessons just like this on YouTube, so go check out more stuff on my channel through coaching or B2GM, anything like that if you want more StarCraft information. And until the next one, good luck, take it easy, uh, go get some ladder points, and uh, adios. Bye, guys.